G'day. When I was younger, when I was a child, every number plate that I saw on a car looked like this. In fact, that was a number plate we had on one of our cars. Uh, and when I was a child also, I remember my parents using our telephone number a number of times and our telephone number was this. That was it. So that was our number plate. That was our telephone number. Now, I'm aware that in different countries around the world number plates vary, but I'm just mentioning that here in Australia, in New South Wales, every number plate was three letters followed by three numbers. And at, when I was growing up, every phone number was just six digits. So why did all that change? Well, what's the biggest number you can make with six digits? I think you agree that the biggest number would be 999, 999. And the smallest would be 000, 000. And you go one, two, three, four, Perhaps someone, somewhere around the place, had the number 000001. Never found that out. Uh, perhaps they used the zeros for a special code for something. But there would be 900, oh, from 1 up to 999,999, plus that first one would make 1 million different digits. Now, I've just produced a video about the art of counting in mathematics, which we call combinatorics. I better write that again, in case this is the first time you've seen a video on it. It's the art of counting, the art of counting all the different possibilities. And the way that a mathematician would look at this is that they'd say, we've got to put six numbers down in order. This is an arrangement much like arrangements I was talking about in the previous video when I was talking about playing cards. But here we've got an arrangement of numbers to make up a six-digit telephone number. And the question is, how many different digits could I put there? Well, if I allow myself to go from zero all the way up to nine, so I could restrict it if I wanted, but let's say I accept all of those, there are ten possibilities. And if I allow 10 possibilities here, then putting them together, mathematicians multiply because every one of those would have 10. So I've put a zero here with 10 different possibilities, then a one with 10, then a two, and then a three, all the way up to nine. So I actually have 100 possibilities with two digits from naught, naught up to nine, nine. Then for three, it'd be another another 10 possibilities here, and another 10, and another 10, and another 10. And if you multiply them up, guess what? There's your million. Ten, six tens multiplied together give you six zeros, one million. And we worked out there had to be a million anyway. But that's how a mathematician would think about it. Well, how would they work out the number of possibilities for a car? Actually, before I do that, why did this change? Well, there came a time when there were more than a million telephones in New South Wales. And once there's, once there's a million telephones, once there are a million telephones, you need more than a million possibilities. So we had to start adding digits, area codes and things like that to cover all the possibilities. What about number plates? Well. If you're going to have three letters followed by three numbers, how many different possibilities... Oh, it's, it's raining in case you're wondering what the background noise is. But how many different possibilities are there? Well, for the numbers, I know that there... I can put ten digits here. I could have a zero there, a zero nine eight. Uh, there are 10 digits I can have in the next place and 10 digits here. How many different letters are there in the English alphabet on our number plates? Well, in the English alphabet, there are 26 letters. 
So there are 26 possibilities here, and there are 26 here, and there are 26 there. So the number of combinations, or the number of arrangements is probably a better word for it, would be that. Now I've got my calculator here. I'm not good at cubing 26 in my head. I can do it, but it just slows me down. So I'm just going to cube it here. And I'm going to add three zeros for the multiplying by 10 three times. And the answer is this. 17576000. Zero, zero, zero. Now the fact is that when number plates were like this when I was growing up, the first letter was governed by what state you were in. I know that Queensland, north of us, had number plates starting with O's and P's and N's and M's and such like. And um, other states, they started with other letters. New South Wales had D, E, F, G, and I can't remember exactly what the letters were. But that was enough for every car and every truck and every bus, every registered vehicle in Australia. But there came a time when there were more than 17 and a half million vehicles to be registered. And that was not enough. And that's why uh, on our roads now you see number plates that are two letters. You see other numbers that are um, two letters. Followed by four numbers. There are all sorts of combinations. And you might work out how many combinations there are for this. It would be 26 by 26 by 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. So how many different number plates can look like that with two letters and four digits? Um, will it be five, uh, 676 with four zeros? Because um, 26 times 26. So there are nearly 7 million of those. And there are lots of combinations of these. So we have plenty of variety now to keep us going for a long, long while here in Australia. And if you look around your country at your number plates or your telephone numbers, you'll start to understand why the variety has been created to allow for that many registered vehicles or registered telephone numbers uh, to exist, all different. And it all derives from this art of combinatorics, the art of counting up all the arrangements and possibilities. We can do this in all sorts of ways. I, I remember, I mean, I've seen it in textbooks, but I remember it as a young child going into a, a restaurant once and asking myself this question. It's a very nerdy sort of question, but they had, uh, they had a menu and it had entrees, nice small dish, and then a main meal, and then desserts. And they actually had drinks. So you'd have a, a juice or a milk or something like that. And I was curious, if I came back, I could have an entirely different meal if I had one of each from the one I had the previous night. And I could come another night and have a different one, and another night and have a different one. And I wondered if it would be possible in my whole life to try all the combinations out. Well, let's make it up. Let's imagine here in this, this restaurant, they had, let's say, five entrees and 16 main meals and eight desserts and let's say six different drinks. How many different arrangements of these could I have if I just had one entree, one main, one dessert and one drink? Well, I could choose any one of those five entrees, any one of them. And once I'd chosen that, I could choose any one of those 16 mains. So, I would end up having five times sixteen combinations or arrangements of them. I should use that. I shouldn't use those words interchangeably. 
because for mathematicians they mean something different. So let's keep with arrangements. For the first entree, I could have any one of those 16. For the second one, any one of those 16 and so forth. So 5 times 16, that's 80 meals already. Times 8 desserts, times 8 multiplied by, by 6. So the number of arrangements, there you go, yeah, the number of arrangements is this. So that'll be 5, that's 80, 6 eighths of 48. 0, 8 8 to 64, carry the 6, 4 8 to 30, sorry, thought one thing and started writing another. Okay, 3,840 different meals. So if you did one a night, there are 365 nights in the year, roughly, which is just over. 384, it's a bit over 10 years. If I actually did the division, 3840, 3840, divide by 365, it would be just about 10 and a half years, 10.52, before going out to dinner every night before I'd used, to tried out all the possible arrangements of those meals in one restaurant. Question arises. What if I try to go in different restaurants in different uh, combinations and arrangements go everywhere? Mathematicians who count, who work in the area of combinatorics, relish or desire or enjoy the art of counting and the art of working out how many possibilities, how many ways can things be arranged or sorted. And you can see, I think, the importance of this in industry, in the running of factories, in the management of trade, and all sorts of things. It is just such a vital skill. The simple art of counting taken to much higher levels. And I've got one more video I'm going to share with you about uh, getting back to the pack of cards, which I think you'll find intriguing. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.